maybe the first thing I ever saw of Come, Come to Bean's work was um, Testament of Mary. Mm. And I remember Fiona Shaw did a production of it in the Barbican and it blew my mind. And I guess her and him and just the kind of titanic language that he has and also something so human was my first kind of meeting of him and then of course I saw the film and read the book but um yeah this is my first I guess engagement with him on the page <laughs> Long Island I think has the ability to stand on its own mm. and whether you have seen Brooklyn or read Brooklyn what that story is is echoed as a kind of ghost of of the past of where you meet mm. Long Island as a book in the present and with the same intensity of what all those relationships contained in Brooklyn but so much time has passed mm. um you could read Long Island having never met Brooklyn and still have mm. uh, that feeling of something ha having happened from before and I think it would be kind of interesting maybe to read both of these back to you know Brooklyn and then Long Island but mm. I've actually I guess it's a bit like life you know things come back to haunt you at a certain time of your life when you least expect it or something interrupts your life and you're you have no option but to go back and face parts of yourself that you left behind or that you mm. thought you left behind. I guess what's interesting about these two books beside each other is, you know, now it's so easy to go anywhere in the world that actually popping to America and coming back to a local town, it isn't such a big thing. Mm. But in the 70s, for somebody to leave their town and come back and you know, the town is still as it was, but you come back differently from that, as Ailish does. Mm. And she has to re-meet herself with the life that she left. And mm. the beautiful thing about Irishness, <laughs> one of the beautiful things about Irishness and Irish people and the sense of a town and this community which does hold each other, but also looks in at each other. And it's always been a country of people who've left. Mm. and how much that might threaten an identity of a place that's trying to hold on to who they've always been. Mm. You know, probably in the 70s, it was even more heightened about what that outsider, you know, the idea of the outsider coming back into mm. this thing that has um, found a way to feel safe in itself or mm. knowable in itself and how an outsider might interrupt what you've always known in the same way that Tony interrupted and the possibility of Brooklyn and Long Island interrupted Ailish in in the first book, you know, mm. that that possibility of being able to change, be different. Like mm. Mm. I get the feeling in Long Island and in Brooklyn that even in this small town, people want to be different. Mm. You know, they want and what's so brilliant about his writing is Nothing is ever explained to you. It's all this sub, sub, the subliminal wants of people in this small community where it's quite hard to breathe, you know, and be different in some way, to want something outside of what you've always been with each other. And I don't know, I, I think whether you're coming from Brooklyn or you're in, in Escorthy, that feeling of wanting something more for mm. your life mm. is part of being human mm. and how they manage that within the limitations or the expanse of their landscape is what all these people are kind of challenged with. I think Ailish finds her relationship with Ireland complicated. I don't live in Ireland anymore and I think when I move back and I, when I fly home, the thing that reignites my longing to go back there is like the smell of the land mm. or, you know, it isn't necessarily things or it's like a sensory kind of feeling about yourself mm. in a place that you have mm. grown up in or as a child. Mm. And I think it's not as straightforward as that. And I think Ailish's relationship with longing to, I guess, go back to that part of her life is complicated. It isn't straightforward. Mm. But I actually think that's what Colin pulls the kind of the wool back so brilliantly in saying, 
you know, the romanticization of this, like we none of us can ever go back to the place we've left, mm. like in a relationship or even the town or your home or it might look the same, but maybe your emotional landscape is different within mm. that. It's inevitably going to be different, like mm. no matter how much time has passed, like mm. these people and places are going to be different to you now and you have to try and navigate yourself differently mm. within that. I mean, it's scary because it's so intimate, you mm. know, that's what's scary is that he I know all these people mm. and I know these little spiky edges and these wantings and these mm. inability to like actually say what you <laughs> say what you need to say mm. and the responsibility of of, I guess, keeping hold of that intimacy that he creates mm. in his his book is what's scary. But whenever I listen to him talk or read or anything that I've watched of his, I just I feel close. It's been really intense reading this book because there's so much tension within those relationships mm. of like the thing not being able to come out straight away, mm. which I guess is everywhere. But maybe in Ireland, we're a bit more finely tuned. <laughs> Oh, God, there are so many in this book that I loved discovering vocally and finally the characterization of them and like being just brought down memory lane down different streets and clarity of being like, I could do her, I could do her. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the one that I really actually made myself laugh <laughs> was Ailish's mother, Mrs. Lacey. And just the like... Uh, kind of the terse compassion of her, you know, this knitted up woman who doesn't really know how to let anything in because she's um, had to let things go. But just the humor, you know, just the like unbelievable humor that spools out of her mouth as she talks about somebody else in the town who's boasting or a party that killed somebody. <laughs> it's just so brilliant. What's hard is that there's so many characters and one minute you're in Brooklyn being like a big Italian mama who's just like got passed everywhere and next minute you're playing some lad who's like stood up, sat up at a bar and kind of, you know, gazing into his own abyss of his own self and how is he going to get out of here and sometimes you have to kind of go back and find the I, I that's what's so in the it's always in the writing is like the tiny little nuance or the emotional thread which can encapsulate a whole person in mm. some way and I guess it's just keeping hold of all the threads which is mm. quite hard especially because one minute you're in America and next mm. minute you're in an escorty and next minute you're in Mrs. Metcalf's boudoir trying on clothes that don't fit and she's not who she says she is mm. and what that is and you know people change as well like it's fun to find a fluidity with that like mm. people talk differently to different people mm. and finding I guess just finding the emotional tick from which this person is living mm. is really my way in uh, with these characters no. I think like the sign of a good writer and I know nothing <laughs> is that you kind of find a way to connect to all the characters in some mm. shape or form. Like what I love about his world is that he blows the lid on this kind of performance that we all live in our lives. And I feel like you can connect with all of them. Like, you know why Mrs. Lacey is the way that she is and you want Nancy to succeed and you want Ailish and Jim to be just, I don't know, get on a boat and go somewhere and you want you want everything for all of them. And I think that's why he's just such a brilliant writer is that, you know, we all could be in that situation and how we deal with it isn't, it isn't the performance, it's like the survival mm. <laughs> of it.